going on? What's happening? What it is? Welcome back. Welcome black to the Millennial Masterclass podcast, like servicing all millennial issues. All of them. All of them. Yep. That all issue them. You, you were thinking about last week. We talk about that shit. It's all right here. <laughs> but um, I am one of your three hosts posted up in New York. I go by Trist and we're going to send it over to the DMV today and let, okay. uh, let, let my lovely co-host over there tell you what's popping. What is popping over there in the DMV? In the DMV? Not a damn thing. <laughs> That's Sean the Don, by the way, y'all. Waiting. That's oh, yes, is. yes, of course. Sean the Don. Speaking. <laughs> All I've been doing was thinking about Thanksgiving, y'all. I'm just trying to fuck up some real. low vibrational place. That's the only thing I've been thinking about. I'm with I, you. Look mm-hmm. at this one. Right. Eating this popcorn. So you're ready to be eating too. Very low no, vibrational. It's, no, it's juicy. No, y'all talking about some juicy shit, so I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Leslie, what you been up to? Say, just get ready for Thanksgiving, ready for these low vibrational plates, ready to fellowship with my family because I miss them. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. I chilled this weekend. <laughs> Tristan, why you keep making that face when we say low vibrational plates? Because why would you use that <laughs> word? Why would you, why, why would you introduce this shit? Like, why would you introduce to that lady? That nonsense that shit over is here? so funny. You I mean, said, she I'm, coined a catchy term. I ain't going to hate. She coined I haven't term. used it one time. I have not caught on. I did not catch it. It slipped right The rest of the mind. internet has. Mm-hmm. So what is a low vibrational plate? Like if I put that together, what does that look like? Good. For me, for me, good Southern eating is what it was. And she was hating on it. But it was on her plate as well. So I still don't understand what she was hating on. But yeah. She's already done the work to, to be able to accept that. The other person has. She's done the work to make it seem like she's something that she's not. That's what she says. <laughs> Yikes. All Anywho, right. Tristan, uh, Tristan. How was your weekend? <laughs> My weekend was um, full of me not sleeping. Ooh. I got a total of in 72 hours, I think I may have gotten like 10 hours of sleep. It was, really? It was wild. Yikes. What were it you doing? Like, I was helping a friend out with an event, but we'll talk about that event later. But I was in Boston this past weekend. Uh, it oh. was a time. Shout out to Boston, man. Boston's cute. It is. Is it? Like, mm-hmm. It's cute. Yeah, it really is. Right, me yeah. No, you wouldn't mm-hmm. think about it, but Boston gives St. Louis, gives Detroit vibes. Like, Boston's mm-hmm. cute. I was just I thinking, give racist white people. It can oh, do that too. Oh There's a lot what? of places. That's so many different that, places. Aren't there a lot of black people in Boston? I feel there like there are hella black people in Boston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. married that first sight season in love. What was that last season was in Boston? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So it's you know, it's a it's a decent little place. But it seems like it is time to get into the meat and potatoes of this show, you know? Because I know we got some information that the streets want. Do you have the information that the streets want? Don't I always. No, nigga, do you have the information that the streets want? <laughs> and do. Oh, okay. You asked right for now. it. <laughs> yeah, I did. You're right. It's time for the bulletin board. Let's take it. All right. So I have a double cheeked up update. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's already, you know what? Let me, it's time. All right. It's time. Okay. It is, go ahead. Do y'all, right remember, do y'all remember the Florida A&M student who posed naked in front of like the Rattler statue on campus? Remember the black girl? Oh, and, yes. I yeah, do yeah, remember. The Medusa, okay, so we have an update. So if you remember in my original story, fam, Can she you, go door to door now and knock on people's no. doors and say hello on no. the section? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, if you remember in the original story, fam, you after that post went viral, they said that they were going to hold her master's degree. And they weren't going to give it to her. So <clears throat> she went through the whole process. And so um, basically shortly after the video went viral, FAMU said that it violated, you know, the student code of conduct and she would not receive her degree. However, she got them attorneys and she was like, wait a minute, I ain't violate nothing. So give me what I earned. So her attorney, David Kubilium, said to me, it was a complete violation of her First Amendment right of expression. Williams was not actually in the nude when she took the photo, but was wearing a nude color bodysuit. I'm going to pause right there because I went back and looked at the photo. And so either if she did wear a nude color bodysuit, maybe the uh, photographer like blurred it out because it, 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 it gave nude. Yeah. It gave crack. It gave she was, like... She was naked. Cup. She was naked. She was naked. Yeah. They yeah. just used that in the court because you can't prove it. But I don't blame them. That was a great defense. Was right. Great defense. Right. 
Um, he yeah, also I'm said, saying whatever to get my damn degree. I done paid and worked hard for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's real. Um, her attorney also said when she took that picture, there was no one around the campus. So it's not like she disrupted school functions, which is what the school initially said. Secondly, the school's policy, uh, pol- police department, excuse me, confirmed she was not in any violation of any Florida statute. So with that being mm-hmm. said, um, she will be awarded her degree finally, which she's been seeking because she's in, in um, what mental health therapist um, realm. And so in order to get certain internships, she needs to have that degree so she can present it and be able to get the internships and able to be get, become a licensed therapist. So that was holding up her career. So all mm-hmm. well that ends well. <laughs> Just you are to the wise. For future graduates, maybe not pose nude in front of your school statues, maybe on campus because you might have an issue. No, 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 right. incorrect, incorrect. Let's let's tell everybody what they really learned from this story. What don't release, learn? don't release the pictures until after you have after to you get your degree. <laughs> See, that's, that's the key. The lesson. That's the key because you get tried to fucking first. flex too hard. That was the thing. And mm-hmm. then on the day of the graduation, as you was getting it, you should have got naked on stage. Like that would have been the time. That would have been the time. Mm. No, you no, might get arrested no, at that yeah, point. Yeah, because then you go to jail, public nudity. But hey, anyway, what, what, wear your brown body suit like you claim. There you go. Yeah, I wasn't no brown body suit. They lied about that. I, I went back and left. I'm like, mm, this photographer may be too good if there was a brown body suit because it was giving like. I yeah, mean, like you can if you, graphically you could do something with that. Like if she had a naked picture someplace else and they pasted it over. I mean, you could make something happen. But, I guess. No, she was naked. We know she was naked. Everybody yeah. Knows she was naked. But no, I'm right. sh- shout out to her. what's her name again? Uh, Terica Williams. Shout out to Terica Williams, Terica. master's graduate of Family Terrible. Girl. Do your thing, girl. <laughs> Do your thing. Next time, just po- wait to post that photo. Yeah, wait, yeah. Word to the wise. All right. And uh, in my last story for the day, I titled this one: "What about your friend? <laughs> well, they stand there." When they ain't let you down or let you down. Let yeah. you down. Let you down. There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> I didn't know either, Leslie. I was I'm just gonna hum that out. Will they let you mm-hmm. down, baby? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. What about mm-hmm. you? Well, I'm glad we got that out because this is actually a sad story. So Oh no. Damn. Oh, I didn't know that. Why are you you did this shit on purpose. You didn't even did fucking shit preferences that it was sad. Yeah, you did. No, not at all. And you let us go ahead and act a whole ass. And we, then you like, no, oh, we, by the way, we this shit is that. sad. All this right, shit's no, sad no. as hell. We needed to uplift our spirits. Um, I thought I was going to watch Hitch and you showing seven pounds. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> For seven seven happy pounds is such a good movie. It's That's so sad. It's it the is. the saddest shit I've ever seen. It is. Took a turn. It's so sad. All right. Um, shout out to Will. Okay, so I don't know if y'all have heard, but within the last like week or so, this story has um started to go viral on social media. Although I haven't seen it on the news stations, not national news, not local news or anything like that. So hopefully um it'll start making its rounds because I feel like a lot of times when stuff happens to us people of color, especially women of color, like it just doesn't get covered. So um, if you haven't heard, Shanquella Robinson, a 25-year-old woman mm-hmm. from Charlotte, North Carolina, was found dead in her hotel room on October yeah. 29th while on vacation with friends in San Jose del Cabo, Mexico. So Robinson's mother, Salamandra Robinson, told news outlets that initially her daughter's friends said that she had died of alcohol poisoning. This was literally like a day after she arrived, like barely 24 hours after arriving um, in Cabo. And how would they even know that? Exactly. You like, can't if, they saw her, like, if they saw her drinking a bunch, I mean, you that's what you're But you'd be assume. assuming, but you no, can't. but you'd still be assuming. You can't rightfully say that's what it was. She could so. have had an aneurysm or something. Like, you you can't just say right, that. Right, right. We didn't get the autopsy report. No. We have yeah. Report. Exactly. So her mother said that she spoke with her Shanquella Friday evening. Uh, she was having dinner. Shanquella and I never... and Salamandra. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Can you go on? Let's go. Uh, She was having dinner and this is her mother speaking. She was having dinner and I never spoke with her again on Saturday evening. They, as in her friends called and said she wasn't feeling well and they were going to call a doctor. And when they called, the doctor hadn't arrived yet, but they said she had alcohol poisoning. They couldn't get a pulse. Each one of them people there with her were telling different stories. So already this Mm. is looking real shady. So according to the death certificate, Robinson's death was caused by a severe spinal cord injury in atlas luxation, which is an instability of the first two uh, neck vertebrae. 
So shortly after that, newly released footage was revealed that Robinson was actually attacked while she was naked in the video. This girl is fighting her, literally beating up on her. Shanquan is not even like fighting back. So at that point, we don't know if she was intoxicated and was kind of out of it, but her parents said that she just wasn't a fighter, you know? So she's not. So wait, 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 wait. And there's a release video mm-hmm. of somebody attacking her in her mm-hmm. hotel room. Mm-hmm. So a lady was attacking her. Mm-hmm. The one of the girls, girl. one of the girls she was on the trip with, her name one is, friends. yeah, her name is Dejanae or something like that, I believe. Um, Dude, and we should have sung Backstabbers before this shit came up. Oh my God. Well, there you go. We can sing it on the outro. But um, a man who appears to be filming the uh, assault, which was one of the male friends who, friends, I use that loosely, who was on the trip with her, can be heard in the video said, can you at least fight back as he's recording? Crazy. Um, so she attempts to get away from her attacker, but replies no before the woman slams her to the floor next to the bed. The woman then punches and knees her in the head before yelling at her victim, get up, I'm tired of this. Where are they getting this footage from, though? So basically, they recorded it, and they said one of the other girls who didn't fight, because they said apparently, and I'm I'm getting a lot of information from a lot of sources, so I want to be careful on what I say, um, because what I'm reporting now has actually been, you know, written up in the story. That's correct information. Now, what else I've been hearing is allegedly... One of the other girls named Winter, she um, also participated in fighting her, but that's not on that video. But there's a third girl who apparently got scared when some people started saying like, oh, the friends have something to do with. So she released that video to show that like, which I don't know what she was thinking, because I guess she tried to show that she didn't have any parts in it. It it wasn't her. Right. It ended up implicating everybody else. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. So um, a, a representative for Villa Linda 32, the property where the group was staying, told um, WJZY that the concierge contacted a doctor who attempted to revive Robinson, but she was declared dead at 3 p.m. local time, reportedly about 15 minutes after she was beaten. So um, there was another friend who joined the crew a little later and told there's six people who are involved in this. They're now calling them the Cabo Six. I don't know who coined that term, but that's oh what they're calling him. God, it was yeah. fast. I'm like, they they already gonna have a doc for they even anyway. We'll come back to that. So a man who joined the trip after everyone else said he remembered getting off his flight at 2 16 p.m. Mind you, they pronounced it at 3 p.m. Um that Friday and called one of his friends to find out where to meet them. That's when he said um his friend informed him that Robinson was not doing well. He said they told me that Quella was sick and she was showing signs of alcohol poisoning. He claimed he then rushed to her bedside where he remained until a nurse arrived. Shanquilla's body was flown back to Charlotte last Thursday and a funeral service was held this past Saturday. Mind you, the friends left her in Cabo. They flew back to North Carolina. Her so-called best friend who was on the trip with her went to her mom's door, was sitting with her every day just trying to console her and stuff. But then when all these stories started coming out, he went ghost and they hadn't heard from him mm. since. So up in her mama's face, when he knows the truth, went ghost. And basically what happened was they left her body. They flew back. And once her family was informed that she had died, her dad and her uncle had to call all the like funeral homes they could find in Cabo to try to recover her body. And he said it was an angel at one of the funeral homes who said, sir, I'm going to help you. I'm not going to stop until you get your daughter's body back. And that person did help them get her his daughter's body back. And they had to pay like $6,000 in order to fly her back. I was like, this is insane. Like, it just sickens me because it's like, I don't know if she thought they was friends. I don't know if they were associates. I don't know what this whole friendship looked like. But y'all really got to be careful who you travel with, who you call your friends, because I don't know if they were secretly like plotting on her. I don't know if something just went left during the trip and they got mad and tried to retaliate. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. All that hasn't been released. But this young lady did not have to die and did not have to die in this manner. It's just sickening. Yeah, that was I saw that all over social media. That that is terrible. That was really terrible. Mm -mm -mm. Definitely going to keep her family in my prayers because this is uh, definitely mm-hmm. one of those stories I'm going to give y'all an update on because now the FBI is involved. And mm-hmm. so 
what I, oh, what else I've been well, hearing? Because yeah, somebody got to get held accountable. Yeah, and what else I've been hearing is to the that and find what really happened though, because we still don't mm-hmm. even know what really happened. This is crazy. Because did she even die as a result of like them wrestling? Like what happened? You know, you can assume that because of the time frame of when the fight happened and when she was pronounced dead, and the fact that it was her her spinal cord mm-hmm. and she was body slammed on the video and she was severely like beat in the back of her head. She's literally sitting on the ground like this and the girls beat her in the back of the head like like slugs and it's it's ridiculous. So one can assume that, but again, we won't know until they actually catch these people and you know question them and stuff. But um I also saw that Mexico will extradite them back. And so if they are found guilty, they'll serve time in the Mexican prison because that's where I have it. That's the worst. Yes. Yes. So I will definitely have to keep y'all updated on the developments with this case, but justice for Shanquella because she did not deserve that at all. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Justice for Shanquella. Mm -hmm. But I hate to leave y'all on that note, but that's all I have yeah, for you. We could have dancing before that. Oh my god, we really did. And I'm we could have we could have sang backstabbers. We could have had a more appropriate way. Do you want to take to... us out to backstabbers? I'm not familiar with that song, so do you want to take us out? To I don't know. Really, what that is the OJ? Even. What they do? They smile in your face. Oh, oh. Play, them backstabbers. <laughs> yes, got <Backstabbers>. you. <laughs> I'm just saying that felt like uh, God damn. That's real. That's real. That's ah, real. Jinkwella. Anyway. Well, you know my saying. Prayers, prayers for Salamandra. Pray, prayers to her mother and father. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. I just wanted to say that name. Say, I say know you did. did. <laughs> I, I understand. But um, yeah, I will keep my ears to the street and report back next week after I have my low vibrational plates. Talk about it. <laughs> so I have a couple questions. Now the okay. first question is um does anybody tell you how much you sound like Michael Che? I'm just gonna put that out there. Just, just <laughs> I want you to I want you to, mull, I want you to mull that over. Just mull that over. Now the other cannot. question is now, the other question is now have you ever gotten that? Now, like no, I want the answer. No, okay. No, I've I've never gotten that. I hope I never get that again. <laughs> <laughs> You feel so, me? Part, like, hey. part of this is that I've been watching that damn Michael Che a lot. So honestly, like you really had his cadence for at least a good four or five of your sentences. I want you to know that. Okay? <laughs> Put that out there. Yo. Only Tristan. Yeah, he gonna That's go watch crazy. that damn Michael Che now. He gonna check it out now. He gonna be like, you know what? I, I am. Maybe I that am. is I me. I, I really am. I really but am. But it's on, yeah. it's, on, it's on HBO Max. Not that they needed a shout out. But either I way. Right. Um, so now that you've gone through this journey and you've seen like where you come from to where you are now, like what advice would you have given your younger self, you know, to kind of try to, you know, like if you, like, I guess if you call it like landmines that you didn't want to step on, like how would you have navigated it differently? Would you maybe not change anything? You know what? I actually saw one of these questions that I was going to ask me. And, <laughs> we should hope and, that you and, saw and, all the questions. I did. I did. I, I, I did. I yes, did. You did. You wasted our time. No, 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 I did. I did. I definitely, I definitely skimmed them over. I skimmed them over because I knew that if I actually looked at questions and like tried to memorize them, then I, then I felt like. It would be rehearsed. Yeah. I get that. I, I understand. Wanna, I, wanna give, I do. I, I want to give you the authentic, the authentic, authenticity. So I wouldn't give myself any advice. Um, normally, I would always say, oh, yeah, you know, always keep God first. That's, that's a given, bro. That's a given. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like the things that I had to go through to be who I am now, I would I wouldn't give my younger self any advice because if I sidestep any of those landmines, I probably wouldn't be who I am right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the the darkness that that I had to go through make helps me to appreciate even the slightest glimpse of light that I can see. Oof. I felt that. You know that. what I'm saying? So, I felt that. So, so yeah. County man, Cullen, so, and I'm here for I'm it. church today. You know, so, yeah. I thought it was I, County nah, Cullen young, right younger there. Self, younger self, put your head down, keep moving, and, and, and don't stop moving your feet, bro. It's like football. You just got to you gotta drive through your target. And... Hey. You you gonna hit a wall? You gonna hit a ditch? 
but you get your ass up and you keep moving. And that's mm-hmm. that's the best advice I can give my younger self. So can I just say well, like real I was quick? Gonna say, like go ahead, go ahead. I was going real quick, like, you know, you and I talked about, like, faith a lot, you know, back in the day and stuff like that. I feel like you got some preaching in you, so maybe after acting or simultaneously, oh, you got a word in you. And I know you get this all the yeah, time. you got it before. Exactly. <laughs> it's a calling. Didn't you say that God talked to you through all sources? Okay. You better answer yeah. the phone. He calling. I mean, all right, yo. All right, so check this out. So my mother he takes was a, a sip. My, as he takes a so, sip. Right. As I take Communion. a sip. So... It, Come wrong. as you are. It's all right. <laughs> so, my mother was a minister. You got plenty pastors that drink. You got plenty of people that drink that pastor. Amen. Plenty of them. Mm-hmm. Water in the wine. Water in the wine. Yeah, like that Like that one pastor that left from Baltimore, Maryland. He's now in Atlanta, but I ain't going to say no names. Pastor Jamal Bryant. Oh, okay. I just had to let you say Oh, we know. <laughs> oh, okay. Ex-wife Giselle yeah. Bryant of Real Housewives of Potomac. We know. Yes. <laughs> He's kept yeah. the opposite along with you, sir, which makes perfect sense. It just it, now, I ain't it, understand that football talk, but I know who you're talking about now. <laughs> That's your brethren. Okay. Oh, the fraternity wow. of Kappa Alpha Psi is another conversation in itself. And don't what get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love my fraternity, just not my chapter. But that's another story for another day. You right. Um another day. <laughs> another day. I get it. But yeah, so fun fact, my mother was a minister and uh my mother passed suddenly in 2009 april 22nd to be exact um a couple weeks before my college graduation so Mm. the stuff that so the stuff that i tell you now is the stuff that she told me then and yeah i i know at some point i'm here's the thing i don't need a i don't need a pulpit to minister to people Mm. right you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like and i think and this is just to me, and I'm I'm I may catch bullets for this on the on the back end, and I'm okay with that. But I think I think it's a lot of a lot of ministers, a lot of pastors, a lot of bishops out there that have abused the sanctity and the purity of the pulpit of the church. Hundred percent, and. I, I won't judge them. We're all children of God and their salvation has nothing to do with mine. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe that I need a pulpit to minister to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when I was in Iowa, man, like people had asked me questions and it's, and I answered questions I didn't even know I even had to answer to. And even, even now as an actor, um, when I'm on set, I I never forget. So I just um I know I'm talking all over the place, but just 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 go with me because it, it makes sense. Okay. So we I probably... just ra- I just wrapped a uh, I wrapped up a horror film last June, this past June, with uh, Chad Coleman from The Wire. Um, you if you watch The Walking Dead, yeah. he actually was Sasha's brother, Tyrese. Yeah. Um, Leia Deleon Hayes, she was the voice of Doc McStuffins, and she is now, uh, she plays Delilah on the Equalizer series with Queen Latifah. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. I like and Denzel Whitaker from Black Panther, The Great Debaters, Cutthroat City, all of that. And okay. Denzel, Denzel Whitaker and myself, I actually play, um, I can't tell you too much. But I actually play like his right hand man. So Denzel and I actually had a lot of time to like chop it up. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it was some. Uh, I say all that to say it was some actors there that were you know playing extras and they were asking us questions and things like that. And you know, I had answers that I didn't even know I I could even answer because I was like, well, hell, I'm still trying to make it myself. Mm-hmm. And here it is, I'm pouring into other people's lives. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I get these visions like I win an Oscar. I don't know how old I am. I don't know when it is. But I feel like on that night, when I do win one, is when I'll actually be able to, like, reach millions of people Mm -hmm. with my story. Like, my story is, a lot of people say, man, your story is so dope. 
Man, my story is probably the most darkest filled story you could think of. And but even again, even in that darkness, like people see light. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. yo, I have in two weeks time of my life, I have endured more than what anybody has endured in a lifetime. Like I've lost my mother two weeks prior to my college graduation, 10 months after that, I lose my grandmother. So I'm like, so I, so I've been on my own since the age of 23, trying to figure out how to live. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you got people out here that are trying to navigate their way through or how asking me, how did I make it through? And they, they lost their mama and they don't want to live no more. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? And here it is me, (laughs) <laughs> you know, helping people get through. And it's like, that's crazy to me. So, you know, if if this is, you know, who God has called me to be, to, you know, touch certain people here and there, then, hey, as long as he gets the glory out of it, I'm cool with it, for real. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Man, I just had word. to do a brief breath. So a like- word. <laughs> Damn. It was it was quite a word. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. I mean, I definitely felt an anointing in there. It was. It was mm-hmm. Here you but go. I, let, <laughs> no, but let, but let me ask you this question though. Like, go ahead. honestly, I forget who said it, but they were like maybe it was John Stamos or something like that. But they were like acting is like when you're talking about in terms of becoming an entertainer, in terms of becoming like you know like a face, is less about like your skill level and more about your confidence. Like, and it feels like you're brimming with, like, that type of confidence because I feel like you are filled with it. Like, I feel like I see the drive and everything. But, like, in that confidence, do you experience any self-doubt? Like, do you experience absolutely. any type of, like, <laughs> like the imposter syndrome, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, when I when I turn in these auditions, I never forget. So, after, after the film, I had a uh, – I went through a dry spell. Excuse me. I'm putting up this adapter so my laptop won't die. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went through a dry spell and I, uh, had several auditions after that, uh, Walker, um, Walker, it's a reboot of Walker, Texas Ranger. They had, uh, I auditioned for like a reoccurring role on that, um, had a reoccurring role on High Town on Stars, and, uh, a guest star role on BMF. Like I had some, I had some pretty solid, I had some pretty solid auditions, and okay. each audition, <clears throat> when I looked at them, I was like, "That's the one," or "Yeah, that's that's it right there." And then when I went back and looked at them, I was like, "This is horrible," because it's it's not me, it's not me. And casting directors, they see that it's like, "Yo, he's he's acting." Like a lot of casting directors, they don't want to see you act. They want them. They want you to bring the essence of you mm-hmm. to the role. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So after I basically fumbled those, I had two other um, auditions for some commercials. One was PayPal, and the other one was Neutral Light, that little supplement junk that people be using. Mm-hmm. And the I fumbled stuff, those. Right? Yeah, yeah, the powder stuff. Mm. And um, I fumbled those too. After that, I was just like, "Bro, what's really going on?" Like I'm really, I'm really hurting right now. And when I would go back and look at the auditions, I realized like I'm acting and I'm not, I'm not who I used to be when I first started, where it was, I wasn't even acting. I was giving them me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I had to take a step back. Like I haven't, I haven't been working since like June, like acting wise, I haven't been working since June, since I wrapped that film, because I realized that this funk I'm in is because I'm I'm trying to give them something that I'm not. Um, the main thing that that was a boiling point for me was when I actually um, my favorite show to 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 binge, to binge watch is uh, the Righteous Gemstones. Mm. And what's crazy is that I auditioned for that show twice. Mm-hmm. I had I had auditioned twice, and I went zero and two. And uh, after that, I was like, bro, I, I don't, maybe it, it was at that point. That's when I realized like the enemy was like really 
dealing with me because it was like, yo, you're not good enough. You, you you know you're not good enough. I don't even know why you're out here. You need to just go ahead, go on LinkedIn, uh, re re-download that app on LinkedIn, look up them jobs, and get back to it. And it's been like really dealing with me until I I took this uh this acting workshop that a, a homeboy of mine told me about. She was like, and he was like, yo, take this workshop. I guarantee you that it will change how you look at auditions. Her name is Sarah Mornell. She came from California. Sweet lady, cool as hell. And uh, she basically destroyed everything that I thought that I had to be in auditions to mm -hmm. book stuff. And her success rate is like 97, 96% or something, something crazy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, this one, I realized that it was God because she was telling me a story about how she was working with a director. Her name, the director's name is Sally Richardson Whitfield. And I'm just sitting on the other end and I'm You work with smirking. Sally Richardson I'm, Whitfield. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 smirking hard because I'm like, yo, I know who Sally Richardson Whitfield is. I knew mm -hmm. her when she was just Sally Richardson. Mm -hmm. and, she was bad. And bad. Exactly. She's bad. And She's still she bad. Was, and, yeah, and she, she is still bad, but like low down dirty shame bad. Come on now. Fast. I mean, Hey. And she mentioned, <laughs> and she and she mentioned her husband Dondre. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the she mm. I, she probably looking at me smirking, but she doesn't say anything, and I didn't want to say anything. And I'm smirking on the other side, and I'm I'm smirking hard because I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I'm in I'm in the right place because the fun fact about her story is that my aunt Dot is actually Dondre's aunt. Wow. Okay. Talk about degrees of separation. Really that small okay. Wow. Exactly. So when she said that, I told I told my wife, I was like, yo, I didn't tell Sarah this, but the fun fact about her story is that she actually worked with my cousin. Now, Dondre and I do not know each other at all. I just know that we're related through my aunt Dot because she told me when I was 10. Mm -hmm. And I remember him seeing, I remember seeing his big break on this, this TV show back in the day. It was called The Crew. It was like a airplane crew sitcom but clearly it didn't do too well it was horrible <laughs> um but when she told me that story i was like bet i'm in the right place i'm in good hands and i'm excited to see where i go now as an actor now that i've adopted her tactics and her technique but even before then man i i was i was in a funk like i was i was in in a state of depression because i was like yo I have no money coming in from any acting gigs. And here it is. I got people around me that are actors, like posting their stuff on Instagram and, you know, shit like that. Now, mind you, at this time, Atlanta had not, it, it hadn't dropped. My episode had not dropped. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, God, is this really for me? Like, I don't know what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I'm in this class. I blow it out the water. And then here it is. Atlanta drops the next day. And then it was just like people hitting my phone like, yo, I saw you. My phone, my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram all jumped. Mm -hmm. it, was like, yo, it was like, yo, I just saw you on Atlanta. <laughs> I was like, oh, bet. Because at the time, I had doubted. I was like, yo, they, I probably didn't even make the, the edit. Cause it ain't even really about me. I probably didn't even make the final edit. But then when people was telling me like, yo, I just saw you in Atlanta and like, yo, are you on Atlanta? And I was just like, yeah, I'm on there. And it was like, yo, that's some dope ass shit. Like keep, okay. keep grinding. Okay. Yo. And then all of a sudden, like my commercial started dropping. Like I'm in a commercial down here in Greensboro, everybody and their mama done seen. And then my, I got a, I'm on a, the truest website for like, it's like truest.com slash careers or something like that. And then I'm in like Lowe's home improvements, uh, commercial, like stuff just started happening. And like, since then I've done, I've done your interview. I've done like two other interviews and I was just like, bro, it was just like, to me, I'm like, bro, it was just one line, but like to other people, they're like, bro, it's not just one line. Like you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you're on right. a cult classic. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. you are, you are, I guess so. Like, and the thing about it is like, I know, I know Atlanta, I know how big it is. But me, I have a habit where it's like I downplay 
things only to keep myself from getting a big head. You right. know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you got people out here, they be like, yo, like, nigga, you know who I am? Nigga, I was in Atlanta. It's like, okay, but you had, like, one line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, come on, bro. So, me, it's like, people say it, it's like, yeah, that was me. They be like, yo, that shit was dope. I'm like, yo, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, bro, I'm still Keith, bro. Like, I ain't, I ain't no, I ain't no better than the next person. I just so happen to be on TV. So. Right. Listen, we love a humble king. And if you ever act brand new on me, I'll bring you back to the return lane. So <laughs> just keep Yo, it all the way home. Okay. Bring out receipts. Please, please, okay. please don't do that. Please hey, don't do that. I remember Keith Wynn. Oh, God. Please don't do that. Next thing you know, I'd be on, I'd be on shave room. <laughs> ball alert. Spir- Boss spiritual, it up. Hollywood. Uh, uh, that ain't spiritual hey. at all. So... What I want to know is, who is mm-hmm. um somebody that you look up to in the acting world? It could be about three, four uh, people. I will say Denzel Whitaker being one because mm-hmm. of the gem- because he's deposited a lot of gems and in, you know into my life. Having met him, I will say, of course, the goat uh, Denzel Washington. Mm-hmm. I will have to say Viola Davis. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tristan loved that one. He loved him and from Viola. Viola. I mean, he hasn't said a bad name yet. <laughs> and I will have to say Johnny Depp. Mm-hmm. Okay. Those are okay. Those a lot of my favorites right there, bro. I mean, I'm going to sub out like two names, but like those are some dope ass names. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite, but I'm taking two out. <laughs> well, no, no, because there's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. Sure. You know, we just, we didn't switch some shit around. I love it. Sure. It, it not Not in order. You know, I'm just <laughs> yeah. not in that order, of course. Yeah, in that order, of course. So you said that Denzel dropped some gems on you, All right? Do you have anybody that does that frequently, like some a mentor that you talk to about this industry? Outside of Denzel, mm-hmm. no, no. Is that something so, you would be interested in? Uh, I would be interested in having a mentor. Um, I'm very selective on who I, 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 I share my time with though. Like I'm very selective. Uh, yeah. it's been people, you know, like placed in my path that, um, they were like, Oh, you know, such and such is an actor. They are in, uh, Amazon primes, uh, What's the name of that show that they told me? Uh, some guy, he was in like this movie called The Big Boss, filmed in DC. And I was like, oh, okay, I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's what's up. Um, I talked with him, didn't get nothing from him really. You know, I I came at him like, yo, I'm not asking to be in no films. I know you're a filmmaker. I'm not asking for none of that. I'm just, I'm just looking for like a big brother or something, just to help me through this journey. But it's hard for. It's hard for someone to help me through this journey when, I mean, if I could be candid, they not even on the journey them damn self. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's hard. Like, hey, kudos to you doing your thing. Like, my, my god brother, he's an actor in D.C., and he's doing his thing. He has a, a show on YouTube called Anacostia. I actually love it. I love watching that shit. I think it's dope. But there are other actors that I've come across back home, and I'm like, or even down here in North Carolina, and I'm like, hey, man, we're going to talk about some things. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it's not much, it's like, and I hate, and I really hate to do that because it's like, I'm actually in the industry, like, I'm, I'm, I have professional representation. Mm-hmm. And these are people, these are people that don't have agents. You know what I'm saying? They don't have agents, they don't audition, they just, know somebody that's a filmmaker that has a relationship to get stuff on Tubi and it's like, oh, I got I got a movie on Tubi. Check me out. I'll check it out. I like Tubi. I would too. But (laughs) but you're doing you're doing it for free. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like now I have a I have an issue with that because this is someone this is coming from an actor like a and we're all struggling actors where I get paid for my work. Mm-hmm. Like, commas. You, you, you dig what I'm saying? Talk and, 
you up here and you you doing work for the free ski, mm -hmm. but you're trying to you're trying to tell me how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Come on, dude. Yeah, that that's that's kind of backwards, don't you think? Yeah. So if I had to say, do I have a mentor? Absolutely not. Do I want one? I would love one, but it would have to be somebody that I know. Like, hey, I look at your resume. And your resume is strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're doing. You've been in the industry. You know the game. But if we're talking about somebody that, oh, he know uh, such and such, and they're going to put something on Amazon Prime, and they just finished doing that joint two weeks ago, but they're releasing it on Amazon within, like, the next three weeks, we're talking quality here. Mm-hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I just did a film. I just did a film that took me, like, three months to finish, and they're not releasing it until next year. But y'all doing a film, a feature film in two weeks. It took y'all two weeks to finish, and you're hmm. releasing it in the next month. Yeah, but not, you, mean, not legit. You, 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 yeah, you, you want to mentor me? Tough, silly rabbit. <laughs> it really, Honestly, it really sucks. It sounds in I that like, case. Well, go ahead. I don't know. You got. It. I was just gonna say, just in like our community, since we've been doing all that, at our community, <laughs> it's harder to find mentorship. Um, in certain in different realms like you know other people and other ethnicities can just call their uncle call they you know just call somebody exactly. that can give them someone of quality someone that they can trust someone that's going to actually give you good advice somebody who exactly. is in a place where you want to be not in a right. place where you don't want to be so right. it is just really hard um garnering those relationships and and finding that so i do wish you luck in that journey for I finding mentorship that. I mean, you know, if I don't, if I mean, who knows? My mentor may very well be Mahershala Ali. Who knows? Mm -hmm. That's a Speak great it. one to have. Speak I met it. him once. Okay. He's a cool dude. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I believe it. Most of them are, man. Like when I met Denzel, I was like, yo, I, we were doing, I never forget, we were doing a rehearsal and <laughs> I had called the director because he was like, he wanted to check in with me. He was like, yeah, you know, we coming from LA. Um, the person is playing such and such. I can't say y'all tell y'all the name. He was like, person's playing such and such. He flies in tomorrow. I'm like, okay, well, I gotta ask you. This is Denzel playing... Whitaker. Yeah. Okay. So the, the 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 director is not Denzel Whitaker. His name is Bomani Story. I hit him. I hit him up, and I was, well, he hit me up. We were talking. He was like, yo, what you think of the script? I was like, and Bomani and Denzel helped me change how I even looked at scripts because I'm just. Like I'm green to acting, but I'm I'm natural. You know what I'm saying? I have a natural ability with it. So I didn't know how to like actually like really decipher it, you know, and like embody the character. They actually helped me do that to where I was able to do that. So when I was talking to him, I'm like, yo, um, so who's playing my my opposite, my homeboy? He was like, Oh, Denzel Whitaker. Like he said it like it wasn't like it wasn't mm -hmm. like that's his man's. And I was like, hold on, let's 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 backtrack, Slim. Hold up, hold up. You talking about from the great debaters? He was like, yeah, from Black Panther. So yeah, like I was saying about the script, I'm like, hold up, my guy. <laughs> Let's backtrack. Back, back sir. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he started dropping names and I'm like, yo, I know who these people are. So when we get to the rehearsal, I'm walking in, you know, big dude, six four, whatever, everybody chilling. They're like, yeah, this is such and such, such and such is Denzel. And he just was like, what's going on, man? Hey, I, I've seen your tapes, man. You, you good stuff. I'm like, yo, Thank you, sir. I'm a big fan. You <laughs> I know you're saying? good. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, and you know, we talked. He was like, so what do you think about your character? I was like, well, I don't really know what to think for real. Cause he was like, well, let's look at it from this angle. And they broke everything down for me. And then from there, most of our when I'm excited for everyone to see this because when you guys see our scenes, y'all gonna be like, bro, it, I, I don't really think y'all acting for real. Like, was this in the <laughs> script? Because everything happened so organically. Like, mm. it was like, yo, this was dope. Like, when we went back and watched it, we was like, bro, we spashed. Like, you and I really, we really cut up with this joint. Like, for real. So, so yeah. I love that. <laughs> I can't wait to I watch it. That. So, you were talking about in the future, you see yourself winning an Oscar, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We we love to hear. It. We love to hear it. But who? So we know that that's one of your goals, right? Absolutely. What actor or actress would be like 
your ideal, like I know I've made it, or this this would be the happiest day of my life. I got the call that I could work with this person. Oh man, I would. They might be the one to bring you that Oscar. Okay. It would. It would be for me. You know, normally anybody could say Denzel Washington. I mean, of course. Yeah. But for me, I would. I would love to work with Viola Davis, man. Mm-hmm. Right right that I keep looking at Tristan right like, uh-huh. I would, He'll be front row I would love to work. I would love to work with the Woman King. Like, oh my gosh, that movie was amazing. That shit was amazing. I it was a good thought time. that was amazing. All them beautiful black people. It, mm-hmm. it didn't get the recognition that it should have, in my opinion. Exactly. Right. I don't think it did. But right. okay, I can see that. I can. See. We love. We stand for Viola. Right. We do. This Viola stand I mean, podcast. I, I, I stand for her all the time. I mean, y'all want to act like she's not fine as she is, but that's fine. We that's never said way. she wasn't. Love, you you love, just got an older Viola. woman fetish. We just said she's a little older. It's not really it a fe- It's not a fetish. It's not a fetish. <laughs> okay, it's not. Mm. Anyway, yeah, we in mixed company, so we won't call it that. <laughs> it's okay. He knows what a fetish is. He knows what a fetish is. <laughs> all right. So... As we get ready to wrap up this wonderful interview, my last question to you, Keith, is for those mm-hmm. who may be trying to break into acting, what words of wisdom can you impart to them? Several things, but mainly... Don't give us nothing cliche. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but, I mean, sometimes cliche is, is actually the best thing. But... As always, keep God first and foremost. Mm, okay. Despite how the journey may look, and despite how the wilderness, how tough the wilderness, the wilderness can be, mm-hmm. do not lose faith, and don't mm-hmm. ever give up. Do not give up. Uh, always stay true to your beliefs, your morals and integrity Mm -hmm. because there Mm -hmm. there will be some roles presented to you that will put you in jeopardy of that Mm -hmm. and because the money can be very tempting i implore you please do not do not do not compromise who you are as a person for any type role because certain roles are perfect for other people, and that is completely okay. Was there but a specific all, role that tried to compromise your absolutely. integrity? Like, absolutely. I was given I was given the opportunity to audition for a role with this actually the very well known casting director. I will not say her name, and I was like, okay, another thug role. Cool, I can do that, uh. and. When I looked into it in further detail and I saw the description of the role, I, I immediately turned it down. I sent back the uh I declined it. I said, Hey, I'm I'm not gonna do this. Um they they asked me for a simple reason and I was like, honestly, it it, it pretty much it doesn't align with my morals and beliefs. I basically turned it down. We are all God's children, no matter the color, creed, race, whatever. But me speaking for myself, I felt that I would be selfish to take on that role and embody something that I'm not when I know someone else could be absolutely perfect for that role. And I say that to say that keep God first. Do not lose your sight of what it is you want. Do not lose sight of your faith. And always, always, always maintain your beliefs stay strong in your beliefs and your morals and your integrity love it mm, I love, that. love it. it i'm sure you do have to be, be careful when you're trying to plan roles though because a lot of people will remember you for that forever right absolutely like the crackhead and da, 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 or the mm-hmm. da, 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 like little murder but you know whatever <laughs> but he be playing the hell about that role yeah, like, I mean, oh my god that. i feel every emotion with him yeah, yeah, and and it's so, like, but I he need an award, but they do confuse exactly. Even though he's married, they still want to be like he playing that exactly. little too well. So yeah, and and to just you know just to sidestep all that man and to keep 
that because I know that that can play a role on his wife. And I right. and kudos to her because I know she she's thugging that bad boy out. But right. man, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, brother, we appreciate you stopping by and blessing us and anointing us with all Thank sorts you. of gems. <laughs> you know, not, not a problem. Well, not a problem. Thank thank you well, for having before, me. Well, no, before we get out of here, brother, we got some hot button questions real quick. They're coming at you. Rapid fire. So I want rapid fire answers. I don't need okay. SAT answers. I mean, they could be SAT answers, but that'd be a rapid SAT answer. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So the so now the first question. Spell millennial. <laughs> Are you serious? Can you Yeah, that was the first question. Yeah, M-I-L- can you spell millennial? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, M I L E N N I A L. That is incorrect. But you were very close. Oh, it is two and L's. You were, oh, okay, cool. It's two L's. Two L's just two like L's. in your last name, sir. Just like in your last name. I just want to put. Wow, that that's correct. Cr- wow, look at you. I see what you did there. <laughs> it's like, hey, I must have said there. <laughs> All right. Uh, they fucked up when they didn't put me in this role. Oh, that's a good one. Now, uh, now, I do want to open the floor for this question. This can be any role ever. You're like, nigga, that I could have played. They fucked up. They should have. They should have cast the Keith Holiday in. They Is it American up Gangster? Didn't put me. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> they fucked up when they didn't put me in Blade. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 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 I, I could like see that. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Num- number two. I'm ready for my first sex scene, but first I need to. <laughs> would you do one is the question number one it did like well that might go against I, his but, integrity but his first morals. i need to he gonna tell us okay i need to call my wife hey exactly i knew that was that the correct answer, answer. that was the correct answer. answer thank ladies you ladies and gentlemen he thank is you married. <laughs> i need to, i need to call my wife okay i know that's right it, now this is a question you gotta listen to this question question carefully Okay. If the check is large enough, I'll do my best Yaya Mateen impression in um, the uh, the Watchmen. Because remember, he yeah, comes out. Fine. Okay, let me help you out. He's naked in the role. That's what it is. He's butt naked. In the role. That's what it is. So Listen. if the check is large enough, I will do my best Yaya Mateen impression as Doctor Manhattan. What is that? What is that number? If the check is large enough, are you doing it? What is that number? It gotta be some M's. <laughs> it gotta be some M's. Mm. It has it to be. He's only showing the M's. booty. He's only showing the booty for some M's. Okay. <laughs> not not I mean, even. Y'all got team. He did a front scene. It was a front yeah. scene. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm scene. saying. Like, no, it was, like, a, it was, all, it was a, a wondrous. I'm talking about, I'm talking about M's. Show. I'm talking about M's for the crack. Oh, so the front <laughs> gotta be three times that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. If you, if you want the front, you're gonna have to drop a little bit more M's than that. Like, <laughs> and, and wifey gotta approve. And wifey has to definitely Okay, approve. okay. I okay. feel that. All right, we're finishing up here. Here we go. All right, uh, top five movies all time. So in other words, you go to a desert island, these are the five films you're taking with you. There. Mm. Well, I'll be damned. Brown, uh, brown Sugar, no, I'm um, taking you. You're, you're taking that one with you. you see okay. brown sugar? Yeah, I'm. I'm taking brown sugar. I'm taking the wood. It. Yeah, uh, good movies. Black John classic. John Wick three. Okay, respect. Uh, John Wick three. I'm taking fences. Fences. Okay. As graphic as this one is, I'm taking the five bloods. Oh, mm. good shit. Okay. The I like that. I'm taking the five blows. Okay. All right. And then um, last question. Top five movie soundtracks. Ah, uh, man. Again, Brown Sugar. Um, Black Panther. Mm-hmm. That was one of my... Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, damn. Uh, above the Rim... Oh, good choice. Good choice. Um, damn, think, think, think. New Jack City and all right, and I'm gonna say Juice. Okay, okay, okay. okay. great soundtracks. 
Come well, on. brother, you have passed the millennial gauntlet. You have come, you have stood, you have shined, brother, and we are happy to see it. And we're happy to have you thrive here and to give us all Not these gems, brother. And we wish you well on your next project. And brother, before you get Thank out you. of here, look into that camera and tell everybody what you got going on. You want to promote some shit, you do it right now. Do it. Tell them where to find you, all that. Yo, good. exactly. All right, yo. How's it going? It's Active Keith Holiday, two L's, not one, like my man said. Uh, if you want to follow <laughs> me, follow this. If you want to follow me, follow my journey, underscore Keith, K E I T H, Holiday, H O L L I D A Y, on Instagram, as well as Twitter. I had to put the two and two together. Um, you can catch me on the season four episode since of Atlanta. Uh, I have a movie coming out. It's a horror film called The Angry Girl and Her Monster coming out next summer. Uh, it has been submitted to the Sundance Film Festival uh, okay. for January. Okay. So, yeah, and I got a few other, yeah, you know, I got a few other projects coming out. I can't really talk about, but just stay tuned. This is only the beginning. We love that. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much, Keith. Not a problem. Thank, Thank you. you. I got the sauce. Yeah, I'm saucy. You peep the walk. Yeah. I'm and saucy. welcome back. And you know what time it is. It is time to go outside. It is time to shake those arms. It is time to get some air. It is time for reset. <laughs> Shine the dawn. Oh, yeah, Take like it that. away. I, I, I did. Like I, no, it was great. Oh, Have you been practicing? Have you been, been practicing? working on that and shit. <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> I like. <laughs> mm-hmm. But y'all, this week we are going to get into the AMAs. And for those who do not know what that is, the American Music Awards, aka another white people at Music Awards show. Facts. <laughs> 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 I swear the only one I watched, I used to watch is the BET Awards. Like, other Ooh. than that, I don't be watching Real quick, Soul Trade Awards. Awards come on this weekend. That's Black oh, Black. Yeah, yeah uh, but who are they honoring? Who are they honoring? Though? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I actually don't you know. Gotta look that up. Gotta look that up. I'll watch it talk somebody, about it next week. If they're honoring somebody dope, then it's like, all right. But if they're just like, if it's going to be like, I don't know. Don't who, say it. I know who you're about to say. You don't even know who I'm going to say. You what you about to say, Ashanti? Oh my God, they do that. That's too much. <laughs> they, they already did. I feel like they I feel did. like they did her. They last did. Week. I saw it. And it was, you win. Yeah. yeah. And it was too much. That's so why I, I thought I need, you was about to say her name. <laughs> no, I need them to pick somebody a little more of note. That's all I need. Just pick a up somebody more of, what? of note. Of note. Of, of, of repute, note. if you will. Yikes. But before we get into that. Tristan, you would be really happy to know Beyonce already been collecting her little, her coins, her flowers for Renaissance. 10 Ooh, Grammy Renaissance. nominations. Ooh. 10. 10. More than Jay-Z now. She could gloat in front of his face. Ooh. Okay, wee. and look, that's another for the house. Look, there are no losers in that relationship. <laughs> Everybody wins. Everybody. What is it? A rising tide raises all ships. Talk about it. But Ooh, Beyonce. Like oh, that was cute. That was cute. Beyonce, um, in addition to her 10 Grammys, was also winning the awards at the AMA. She, yes, she was. She left with album uh, album of the year, album, soul album of the mm-hmm. year. Remember she also said left that... with the... Um... No, go ahead. No, I'm going to gloat in a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> Break My Soul also won soul song and R&B mm-hmm. song of the year. What else Beyonce got? Oh, Best Best Female Artist in the Soul and R&B category. Beyonce Mm -hmm. has been, she was collecting those wins. She was. This past weekend. Rightfully so. I can't, this is, now that it's getting rotation, it's a good album. It's grown on me, Sean. It's grown on me. I can't, I can't, get out the camera. (laughs) Twin. So, I want to address... She was going to win either way because she's Beyonce, so... Okay, now she because she's Beyonce. She go with, she'd have been not. nominated plenty and lost. Well, right, let's say with the Grammys, though, I think Renaissance is the one that's going to give her the Grammy, rightfully so, because she has been snubbed a few times when it comes to that mm-hmm. Grammy for Best Album, but I think Renaissance will get it for her. Look, let me tell you but... right now, if the Academy does not give her this Grammy, y'all done we bo- fucked up. We I'm ride coming, at dawn. I'm coming <laughs> to burn the shit down. That's the best damn 16 yeah. song she never put out. Okay, all right. That, far. that is the best. It's, thing. A, it's a it's a quality 16. But but let I me tell you guys, listeners, that's the best shit she's put out since B Day. Since B Day. Mm. All right. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, y'all can make that face. I all really enjoy B Day though. So I right. I enjoy B Day, but I enjoy this yeah. probably a little bit more than B Day. 
That's how cold that's mm. one through 16 transitions was nice. I could dance my night. I could dance the night away. You know, you could even feel a little bit. I felt some shit. I, I can't talk about all the feelings, but I felt something. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it all, sir. Bring right. It back. Okay. Tristan. Bring back me back. <laughs> uh, your boy, Tristan, since we're going off your people right now, your boy, right. Chris Brown took the um, male artist of the year award Mm -hmm. quick pause with that Mm -hmm. so they canceled his performance the day before oh and didn't tell him why oh chris was supposed to perform he had a special michael jackson tribute in there as well and they just canceled it and so when he won this award kelly Rowland actually presented it and she accepted on his behalf but people started to boo and she said "Uh uh-uh chill out she was like i'll accept this award on his behalf or whatever um, and then like yesterday I saw that it's been different things. Some people have said it was because Chris is an abuser and Michael is a, a child abuser, but it's like, why would they even have him perform a Michael Jackson piece if that's how they always felt? You know what I'm saying? Then right. I saw another publication that said, you know, they just have the will and liberty to cancel performances they want to based on showtime and stuff like that. So they There's do. a couple yeah. of mixed but messages. But don't you put a lot of money into that? Like, do you have to pay for your own little situation? When you perform um, at these awards, they provide shows? your set. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure. Like they your background your dancers set. and all But it's of like everything. Everything. Yeah, rehearsing. Like, because right. if you're doing a tribute, you're learning songs, you're doing special choreography, stuff that you wouldn't normally do Correct. with a show. Correct. Yeah. So that's a waste of his time and energy. Yeah, wow. nothing else is a waste of his time. Correct. If exactly. also, before, especially if the reasoning is because he was an abuser, but y'all knew that before he. I don't understand why, uh, yeah. why you even brought it up now. Like, right. That's, that's weird. No, but they like that. The, you know, there's precedent with that. They do that shit a lot, though. That was like Reebok talking about we're gonna kill Rick Ross's deal because his lyrics. You knew the fucking lyrics before you signed them. Is that yeah, like that's a secret? That doesn't make any yeah. sense to me. So yeah, they do whatever mm-hmm. they want. Shit's stupid. That's really that's weird. But shout out to Chris and Beyonce for um just doing <laughs> the damn thing. Those are two. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have said Beyonce is one of my favorite artists, but right now she's one of my favorite artists. Ooh! Like, oh, I is, never thought like, I'd see the day. She is in my top seven right now. Okay. 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 Well, excuse me. Yeah, that, that. That's how good Renaissance was. It was an awakening. Okay. It was a whole thing. So is she number one? Because B says she top two and she ain't number two. So that's what I heard. she's number one in your top seven. Oh, hell no. I shan't. <laughs> That's, that's a little too much. Taking it too think. far, Leslie. Yeah, he's too talking far. crazy. That's but he loves it so much, I thought maybe. Yeah, is she great? No, uh, that's awesome. Great. Look, I love you, Cousin B. But uh, Got Cousin I don't, B. I don't, cousin I don't B. Know. Okay. I don't cousin know Jizzy. Oh, that sounded okay. bad. Anyway. It, it would be Cousin Sean. It would be Cousin <laughs> Sean. Her middle name is Giselle. Her middle name is Giselle. Cousin Jizzy. Um, on that oh, note, we're yeah. going to move on to who else was winning some things at the AMAs. <laughs> Nicki Minaj got Best Hip Hop Female Artist. Mm-hmm. For what, is this for what? the award show where she was upset about being um, nominated That's, in a pop that was, category or something? That was the is Grammys, that? and she did not get nominated at all after that fiasco. In oh, Lotto so did. she didn't. She has no Grammy nominations. Oh. Ever? No, no, for this year. she Okay, so basically she oh. was mad that when they put up the suggestions for the nominations, that um, her free, Super Freaking Girl was considered a pop record, but Lotto's Big Energy wasn't. It was in the rap category so she made this big old fuss about it she dragged lotto into it they went back and forth but now after all of that she's not nominated at all for it wow i'm gonna tell you right now about that pop thing though because that she was right but just the way she went up the way she went about it was wrong and that's the thing but but Mm -hmm. let me tell you something no but the fucking barbs are like a wild pack they're relentless yeah they are no but like i mean like just like from the floor up to like the ceiling like all of them are like if you call yourself a barb or Nicki minaj stand i'm a little afraid of you because Mm -hmm. like that we got at this event like this past fucking saturday we got we ran into we had a we had a tangle with a barb we you know, he was talking and he was going what? like, let me tell you, Nicki Minaj has been the most impactful on rap ever. Oh my going God. In and, in. and I was just like, is this? Is the, this real the, life? Of all yeah. Of like, are you an adult? This is what you want to talk about? Like, that I just scary. assumed that like she was paying him and he didn't want to tell us, tell us about it. Because oh that was the way gosh. her heart he was going for. Like he was campaigning for her for president. That's you know? crazy. Mm, yeah. These stands, these stands can get weird as hell. Yeah, they can facts. really, really get weird. Um, but some other people that took home some awards, Kendrick Lamar took home the rap hip hop male 
um, of the year. I didn't know what you, what was that, Tristan? Is that a dance? Are you upset? I was, was I was vibing <laughs> to it. God damn, why are you in my shit? Why are you, you upset? No, he was making a face. I didn't know if that was a dancing face. That was a hard look. Look, that was that was your hard look. Okay. Yeah, it was right here. It was yeah, I was right Child, here with it. Not not upset. He was in okay. my head. Why are you focusing on the wrong shit? Read the story. My bad, my bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad. Um my girl I'm Tim's dead. went home with an award for yeah. and future. <laughs> I can't yeah, fucking stand great. future, but that's... that "Wait for You" song is is a bob. I really enjoy that song. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that song. So they are the Tim's. Tim's is in my top five though, right now. Ooh. Tim's is in my top five. Ooh. Ooh. Right, so. Okay, I'm here. Absolutely. Right, so. Absolutely. Well, now Absolutely. I really want to know what the top five is. Can you give it to us real quick? I mean, I don't want to give it to everybody all at once. Everybody don't need it. They don't <laughs> I was just too ready He's for so it. extra. Too ready. <laughs> I can I can rattle it off for you. I got I got it. All right, go ahead. Because now I'm not right. This is right now in music. Right now, okay. it's right now. All right, number one is her. All right. Okay. Number, number two would be Tim's. Okay. Uh, Come number, on, women. Number three is is still Yay. I know he got something going on right now, but it's still Yay. He's mm -hmm. he's, he's great. He just got a lot of great shit. I don't I don't really know any better way to say it. Um, hold up. Uh, number <laughs> three. I have a hard time, and I go back and forth about this. But you we're said three was Jay, so four. This you're on number four. Oh, this is four. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I guess Snow Allegra, you number four. Why are you saying like that? Like you don't want her to be there. Because like rise. her music, it's it, it's just not as upbeat. It's like she don't have a lot of upbeat songs. So right. I'm just like, I just feel like I'm in a particular mood if I'm playing Snow Allegra. So it's okay, like that's not it's true. like you know it's like Sade. Is Sade your favorite mm -hmm. artist? Clearly, you're not doing a lot of you know hyper stuff. You clearly, <laughs> are looking at a wall in your fucking house, you know, whatever's going on in your life. I'm mellow and stuff. Yeah, you know. So that's that's what that is. Um, I want to put a rapper in there, but I don't even know who I would even put in there. I can't even. I mean, don't force it. I might have mm, to. I'm so uh, surprised Chris Brown was in this. That's what I really thought. Was well. Do it. Well, Chris Brown was going to be number six just because, like, he hadn't he hadn't put out a bunch five. of stuff. Well, yeah, but Beyonce number seven, so I assume you wanted all seven. So who is five? Even though I only That's the only one we missing. Oh, five. We're gonna go with Xavier Omar right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. right now. Actually, shout I out, that shout out to Mac. Also, shout out to Mac Ayers. But I, other than that, we good. He could be number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When do the Grammys come on? February. Always yeah. in February. Yeah. Oh, damn! That's a while mm -hmm. from now, and everybody already know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's all I got for the AMAs. I'm okay. What you got, Leslie? I just wanted to shout out uh, Lionel Richie for the Icon Award. Oh, um, because yes. because that weekend he was actually honored for the um he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. So he had a great mm -hmm. weekend. Oh my god! Just receiving all Lionel. his flowers. So I just want to say shout out to Lionel. Shout out to the what? Commodores. Shout out to Lionel Richie. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. She is a brick house. Yeah, ow. <laughs> Why does it take some people so long to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't know. Maybe I like know. 40 years it's 20 after years, years from when you released your first album. But they just inducted, along with Lionel, you know, he's been out for forever. They inducted Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, and they've been out for 40 plus years. And Eminem just got inducted, which he just met the cutoff for the 20 well, years. Eminem 40? Like he been in the game for forty years? What? No, 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 no. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis have been. No, but I thought Tristan said the requirements is you had to be twenty, 20 years since year, your first album. Twenty, That's, yeah, twenty so years since your first Eminem album. Eminem just made the cutoff for that part. Yeah, but everybody Ooh. else has been doing this. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he was asking. I don't know. And I feel like they should change to the music hall of fame because not just rock and roll. Like, yeah. Well, that's real. That's real. Black folk made rock and roll, so we know this. We know. So it's fine. So it's fine. It can be the rock and roll hall of fame. It can be. True. Right. Well, shout out, shout out to Lionel Richie. That's what's up, man. That's that's a big um. That's big a huge yeah. Yeah. Huge. Give him yeah, his flowers. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we'll play dancing on the ceiling. All when we're night out long. All night. all night. Can you put that as an outro? All night long. All night. All night. Long. All night. All night. Okay. Mm. <laughs> 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 Moving along. Tristan, apparently you went to a little saucy soiree. I love that name. Come on, saucy. I like saucy the way you said saucy. No, no, you actually should soiree. say it that way because that, that sounds like Boston there. Saucy. I was in Boston oh. this weekend. Um, a friend of mine, uh, shout out to Tizzy. She's an artist. She actually, so the original thinking behind this was the album release party, but it expanded okay. and it became the saucy soiree art experience. 
It was in um, a part of Boston. I forget the part of it, but uh, it's cool. <laughs> and um, I can give you all of the address. I think it's in Dorchester. I don't remember. That might not be right. But either way, uh, we went there. It was an old bank. They changed the venue and they made it. And there was a fashion show. And then there were artists were performing like a Victoria, like almost like Victoria's Secret fashion show. Where you had somebody oh. performing and while they were walking, they had hella mm-hmm. designers there with some young, fresh ideas, uh, some great artists. Uh, there was this one artist. I really wish I knew her name. She was fantastic. It was like if you took like the package of like Chloe Bailey, but like a smaller version, like a miniature Chloe Bailey, and like gave her uh, the Badu aesthetic, and then she sounded like Leela James. It was crazy. Oh wow! She was really, she she was really good. Right. She was really good though. She was really really good. I just it was like Solange. So, Solange. That's not it. That's not it. That's definitely not it. But <laughs> Leslie, um, why the hell would he not know that if it was Solange? I would remember that. I would remember that. Strong J, what? Yes, that's strong. <laughs> Shout out to Grace Jones, though. But either way, that's not the, that's not the point. It was a fantastic event. My soul was nourished with all the art that was going. And then you had artists there. There were vendors. There was food. Like you had like artists that were showing off and were selling their work. It was quite like the cataclysm. Like every, it was the perfect combination. So it was a great time. And then uh, my friend who put the event on Tizzy, she premiered her new song, Saucy. Um, saucy. So, you know, saucy. Exactly. Yeah, listen, saucy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it was great. Uh shout out to all the artists that were there. Um, yeah, man. Fantastic experience. The next one's gonna be in March. So if you guys are in Boston in March, uh, check it out. Okay. I don't know that I will be, but that's good to know. Right. That's mm-hmm. good to know. Just think um, real quick, so see I mentioned the Soul Train Award this weekend. The Escape is receiving the Lady of Soul Award, and then more oh, saying the time is getting the Legend Award. So that's Escape. Being why, why is Escape receiving anything? What's going on? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be disrespectful. Don't do that. Don't don't, they okay, already got man. enough problems right now. Don't do right, that. They right. barely hang it on. Look, I'm not saying that they haven't made musical contributions. What I'm saying is, like, name me four songs by Escape. What I understand it. Uh huh. Understanding. That's one. Right. That's one. Kicking, kicking it. That's two. Um. <laughs> who can I run to? That's definitely not their song, but that's fine. That's the Jones Girls, but they remade it. But that's fine. But that's their song. It's on their album. Sure, sure, um, sure. Ooh, I don't know. My that's little awesome. secret. You're oh. my little secret. And that's how we should keep it. Do you have a fifth one? Um, the Look, arms. All, uh, I'm uh, all I'm saying is Escape is great. But the I just arms are the one who other loves people, me. We could name a few more songs. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Mm. That's well, but they've done a lot yeah. over the years. They have. So. They have. They've written for other people, all kind of stuff. But like that's their individual mm-hmm. stuff. I'm talking about them as a group, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a group. Not so much their individual accolades and their prowess, but them as a group. They was a blueprint for a lot of the girly groups, so. Really? Because the Jones girls, they took that song from, was a blueprint for a lot of groups. So what are we talking sure, about? Sure. There's different generations and different blueprints for each generation. Just like Destiny Child was a blueprint for some, it's like. No. They, no. Anyway. It's, 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 they did the blueprint for flow. Read up on it. They'll say it themselves. I mean, that's real. Take us out, Shaw. That's fine. That's fine. That's all I got for y'all in recess today. Take us home. We gotta be here. Say, take us home again, Sean. Take us home. When I think of home. Okay. (laughs) So clearly, it's time for us to leave today. Um, thank you uh, again to our guest Keith Holiday. We appreciate you. Shout out to Keith. I hope you guys enjoyed part two. Um, incredible journey from an incredible young man. Can't wait to see what he does next. And again, go check him out and see what new projects he has coming up. And again, Mm -hmm. before we get out of here, please check us out on Instagram and on the Twitters and on the Ticking of the Talks and on Facebook and all those other wonderful things. And of course, Apple and Spotify, where you get anywhere you get your podcasts. Because if you're not getting this, then you're missing out. That's all I can say. Okay, say that. And and guys, until the next time, I've been Trist. Girl, let's shine the dust. And even though the party may change, the vibe remains the same. We out, y'all. Bye. Bye.